Hi everyone! In this module, we will be covering how to morph layers in After Effects. This comes from a question that was asked when we were looking at how to morph shapes into one another a few weeks back in, uh, in class. And uh, the answer is yes, you can actually morph objects just like you morph, uh, I mean layers, just like you morph shapes. So, uh, and it's a fairly straightforward process, so I thought I'd put together this short module to show you how to do this. So, um, in order to get things going, a couple of pieces of advice. Uh, you should morph objects that are similar in texture or in color. These are things that you should take into account when you are looking for things that you're going to morph into one another. I know that that's not always the case, and the process that we're going to cover works well for any uh, combination of colors. But if you want the thing to be a little bit more realistic, that's one thing to take into consideration. Things such as, for example, in this case, the, the silver chalice and the chrome dumbbell. It also helps that the objects have similar shapes. Now, I know that you don't want to change a glass into a glass. That, that just not, that's not conducive to, to an actual you know, impressive morph, but it does help. However, like I said, this works with any, any number of uh, shapes. It doesn't matter if they're similar or not. The process is going to be the same for all of them. And it's just a matter of timing uh, specific things with the filters and the opacity of the layers. So to get this going, what I want to do, the first thing we want to do, let me go ahead and stop this. I, I went ahead and recreated the layers and I placed them in here. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and mask out each one of the layers that you have in this composition. And literally, you need to get as close as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to sort of outline the shape of the object that you're masking out. So you just simply go and start pick a point and start literally just masking out. Just go ahead and keep on going and going and going. Whoops, I'm actually creating an object. Sorry. I'm actually creating a shape layer. So let me select the layer. Let me delete that shape layer. Select the layer. Make sure that I am on mask mode when I select the pen tool and just go ahead and start adding a mask. And so you'll just go ahead and create a mask all around the object and, you know, get as close as possible uh, to the edges of the actual object. So I'm going to pause right here and I'll be back when I'm finishing masking both the goblet and the dumbbell. Okay, now that I have completed masking both the dumbbell and the goblet, I have named those two masks start for the mask where I'm going to start my effect and and for the one where I'm going to end the effect. So both of these basically share, uh, they, they have masks now. The I'm going to start in the dumbbell shape and then I'm going to morph onto the goblet. That's the goal. So the mask for the dumbbell is called start. The mask for the Russian goblet is called end. Now that I have those two things set up, what I want to do is I want to um, go ahead and uh, copy the start mask and paste it onto the Russian goblet. And then I want to grab the end mask from the Russian goblet. I want to copy it and then paste it onto the dumbbell. And uh, I'll show you why in just a second. So first and foremost, let me go ahead and grab the start mask, select it, control C or command C on the Mac, and then select that Russian goblet and paste onto it. Now, now you see that the Russian goblet has both masks in it. What I want, to I want to change the mode for that copy of the start mask from add to none. I'm going to start with that. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab the end mask from the Russian goblet, copy it, and paste it onto the dumbbell. Paste. And I'm going to change that ma new masks, that copies mode from add to none. Okay, so we'll start with that. Now that we have this set up, what we want to do is utilize a filter called reshape. So let's go ahead to our effects and presets and look for the reshape filter. Now, I'm going to go ahead and grab it and place it on the dumbbell first. Select that, and I'm going to turn off the visibility of the goblet. Now, with the dumbbell selected and the filter applied to it, I want to decide where this is going to, where the transformation is going to start taking place. So. The first thing I want to do, let's say I want to start this around 15 frames. And uh, usually transformations like this, shapes, 
shape morphing usually takes about 10 frames, 10 to 15 frames max. You know, it, it's fairly fast. And the reason for that is because you're basically morphing a lot of pixels. So it can be a bit of a bear if you extend it a long time. It is also It doesn't actually sell the effect either if you make it very long. So you want to make sure that you have, um, that this transformation happens rather quickly. So this is going to take about 15 frames. So I'm going to start at frame 15 right now, uh, about 10 frames, I'm sorry. And then I want to go ahead and in the filter, select the source mask, which is the beginning start. And I want to say the destination mark uh, mask is my end mask. So now you'll notice that the there is a little line that appears that is indicating that point on my original mask on the start will end up on that point on the ending mask. That's what's happening. And so when I start changing the percentage of change, you'll notice that my object morphs itself to the second mask. Okay, you can change the fluidity or the elasticity of this change by changing from these options that you have in here. Stiff works just well, but if you want something that's a little bit more liquid, you can choose liquid in there. There's also some that are, um, you know, different options. They give you, let me make it about 30% or 50% so you guys can see what changes that has. And you can see sometimes it's very minimal. Sometimes it's extreme, but you can see how the fluidity of the morphing, how fluid the morphing is uh, looking like on the edges of the actual shape or the, uh, the object, sorry, the layer. So you, cho you're, you're, you would choose what fits your composition best, right? You can also change whether you want this to be linear to make it, a, it to make it really stiff, or you want it to be smooth. And that's the interpolation, meaning the, the the frames, the way the keyframes are talking to one another as things are morphing. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and set keyframes for this. So I will start with a value of zero at 15 frames, and then I'm going to go down to about 25 frames, and I'm going to make this 100%. Now, you'll notice that that little bar is indicating where things go. You can add more, and actually, you can change the position of the little bar to specifically say where you want things. So in this case, I would want not this point to come to this end over here, and then I would want to have another point that comes from here to here, so that my morph is a little bit more, instead of twisting as is right now, that it becomes a little bit more straight on, like from point to point. To do that, you roll over the little, you see that little gray line? Look at the ends of it, and when you roll over the ends of it, there will be a point where you see that little circle that appears next to your uh, cursor. Now, that circle indicates that you're on top of the gray line point, not on top of the mask, but on top of the gray, gray line point, and that's where you want to be, when you see that little circle next to your cursor. Now, when you do that and you click and drag, you can actually select the point where that's going to go. It works for both ends of the line. So you can go up here to this point as well and change the position of the original, of, of the ending point. Now, to add new points, you would press the Alt key on, I'm sorry, the Control key on your keyboard, sorry, the Alt key on your keyboard, which is your Command key on the Mac, your Command or your, well, the, the key that corresponds, the, yes, the Command key, the, the Apple key. Now, when you click on the, a point on this, layer on this mask. Sorry, let's go ahead and select that again. Press the Alt key. If you click here, you will notice that it gives you a little line again. Now, this arbitrarily is choosing where the points start and end. They, see, they start where you click, but they end arbitrar arbitrarily. The, the program has made the decision for you, but like I said, if you roll over the gray bar area and start rolling slow, slowly until you find the little circle next to your mouse, let's say it, is, it happens to be sometimes tricky, depending on how complex your mask is. You click, and then you can define where you want the object to start from. So now when I play this back, my bell sort of morphs a little bit better. Now you can keep on adding as many of these points as you want to make your transformations a little bit more natural. So you can, if you can go ahead and press the Alt key and keep on adding points, sorry. Let's go back again, click here, for example, and maybe I want this point 
it takes a bit for me to actually get this. And you might want to zoom in while you're doing this so you get a better grip on the points and perhaps another point here. So let's try one last one here. Select the, the filter, click here. And bring this guy over here, let's say. So now my transformation is controlled by those control points. That looks a little bit more natural. Now, what I want to do is I want to do the reverse on the Russian goblet. So let's go ahead and jump to the, let's press the U key on the keyboard, the bottom one. So I see the key, the keyframes and I want to match. So on the goblet, I might, um, my end result would be this point. So let's go ahead and apply reshape. And I want to start on my end and I want my destination to be start. So now when I do that to that goblet, basically I'm doing the reverse. So that's what's going to happen on the goblet. It's going to end up like this and it's going to start from here. So that's my beginning point. This is my end point. So my point would my end point would be a percentage of zero and it would be starting with a percentage of 100. So now I have basically these two things morphing into one another. But as you can see, I also have the twisting effect on the goblet. So maybe I want to start changing the points on the goblet. And you are better you you're get better results if the morph if the points that you're choosing sort of they match each other. Now I know sometimes it's difficult to make sure that things match exactly but as close as possible would work just as well. So I am going to try from memory to see where they matched, where they landed, sorry. I'm just going to simply try to place them and I'm going to pause here for a second. And let me go ahead and place this last one here. Now notice that sometimes by accident you click and you actually click on the mask and Basically, if that happens to you, if you click and uh, by accident you did this and then suddenly you lost your points, you don't see the little lines. Remember, you can always go back. Let's say, for example, I click on this right now and th this word not to appear. And all of a sudden, every, I, I lose the little blue, gray lines. That's usually because your um, filter got deselected. So make sure you go back and select it again. Simply click on it. And you can go back and try again by clicking on one, like this, for example, see how I got deselected and I don't see the lines anymore. Then let's go back, go back, click on reshape, press the Alt key on the keyboard and go come back to your composition and add the point that you want to add to your filter. So you just go in and select the area where you want the point to go. Let's go ahead and select that. Whoops. And it can get tricky as you can see. But it's a matter of just doing it until you get it. There you have it. And now let's go ahead and move this point to this area. And roughly that should match the original. So when I play this back, you'll notice that the dumbbell shape for the chalice sort of matches the original dumbbell and it just morphs into this cup. Now it's just a matter of playing with opacity for both of these things. So let's go ahead and press the U key on the top layer as well. And with both layers selected, I'm going to press the T key on the keyboard to open up the opacity. I'm going to press Shift U to open up the other um, um, keyframes that I had already set up. And I want to have trans a, a, a uh, opacity change from the dumbbell to the basically a transition. So I'll just go ahead and set my opacity for the dumbbell at 100% at the beginning, and I'll make it 0% at the end. Now I'm going to go to the Russian goblet and it's going to be 100% at the end and 0% at the beginning. Now, um, this might, you might think that that's the end of the process, but in reality, this is where it gets a bit tricky. You need to start playing around with the opacity until you get a happy medium where things transform into one another seamlessly. So let me zoom in here. And the way I do this, I usually place my time marker in between the keyframes and I start playing around with the in and out points of my, um, of my visibility. So in this case, for example, let's say I bring in I want the goblet to be fairly visible all the way to about here. And then maybe I want to bring this guy back in this way. So my actual transformation is only happening in between 
these frames right here. Now, if I see a little bit too much of the goblet, maybe I want to bring it out and I want to change its original value for beginning at this point. So the point is to get a transformation that looks almost invisible. Now, remember, this is going to happen in 15 frames. So it's going to be going like this. And once you play it at full speed, it's almost invisible. I also see some twisting on my chalice still. So my, I, my, I might want to go back and revisit my masking. So I'll select the shape and I'll my add some points. So let's see where this is going. So let's say this point right here, where is that going? It's going to this point right here. So I want to change that definitely. Go ahead and roll over until I get the point. I want that to be here. I don't want that twisting to happen. Look at that. I mean, no wonder this thing was twisting. So you can always, after you're done with fine tune with the um, opacity changes, you can go back and fine tune the points as needed. So let's see what that did. Just that. Let's go ahead and grab this guy here and move it here. And that's a little bit better, a little bit more seamless. So let's do a quick preview of this and see what result we got. Okay. So fairly simple process, fairly straightforward process, but it gives you a fairly quick result for morphing objects between layers in After Effects.